Today on Larry King Now, music legend Morrissey. His first in-depth, in-person interview in 10 years. Why have you decided to do this? Well, because of you, really. Because I mean, of me? Yes, because of you, your reputation, your name, and uh, <laughs> that's enough. On fame, his fans, politics, and the music. Do you love your industry? Um, I don't think anybody does. I don't think anybody does. Why? Why? Because it's very hard, it's very brutal, and um, it's completely changed now, in recent years. Plus... It's all next on Larry King Now. today for this special edition of Larry King Now from the famed nightclub Bootsy Bellows on Sunset Boulevard in West Hollywood is one of the most accomplished, eccentric, and legendary musical artists of a generation. First gaining fame in the 1980s as the co-founder and frontman of the Smiths, Morrissey has had an iconic solo career that has spanned four decades. Today he sits down for me for his first in-person, in-depth interview for maybe 10 years. And later, a special performance. Why have you decided to do this? Well, because of you, really. Because I mean, of me? Yes, because of you, your reputation, your name, and uh, <laughs> that's enough. Since you co-founded The Smiths, yeah. Yeah. do you ever miss that group? No, no. We were very young. We didn't know what we were doing, and we didn't like each other that much. <laughs> so uh, it, it was nice when it finished. Why was it called The Smiths? So the, the name couldn't be attached to any kind of music. It, it could be, in fact, it could be attached to any kind of music, but it couldn't be pigeonholed. So it could mean anything. Your name is not Smith. No, no, it's, <laughs> it's not. Morrissey. It really is. Yes, okay. by birth. Yeah, your fame is spread. Like for example, I understand that you're very big in Mexico. Yes. Why Mexico, do you I think? I don't know. I don't know. But it's, uh, it's, it's a beautiful thing. I don't know why. Have I think it's the, the passion in the music. And the Have you very performed there a lot? People. Yes. They're very passionate people, and they like to hear about reality. And um, here I am. Always been outspoken? No, I'm not outspoken at all. I'm really not. I You're just, strongly opinionated. Well, I'm just uh, an ordinary person in many ways. I just um, speak the, the words of ordinary people. I'm not uh, flash, I'm not glitzy, and I'm not part of the industry. So sometimes I can seem a bit strange. Why strange? Why strange? Because... Most people who want to be in the industry and who want to sing and be successful, they have to behave a certain way, and they do. And they have a fixed idea about glamour and what is glamorous. And uh, I, I never had any of that. I never had any of that attraction for fame and um, so forth. I just, I just wanted, wanted to, to be sing. me. You wanted to perform. I wanted to sing, but I just wanted to be me, for better, for worse. So you didn't care about the stuff that goes with it? I, I never have. And I still do not today. But you like, don't you like applause? Is well, it's... Appealing to people? And yes. You sing for a reason. Well, yes. It's better than booze. <laughs> In your I new don't... album, there's a song called Forgive Someone. Did you write that? Uh, yeah, I did, yes. Are you the forgiving kind? I am, yes. It's a, it's a great failing. It's a failing? It's a great failing. I have it too. I don't carry a grudge. Well, you don't carry a grudge, but you don't remain friends with people who have done no, something no, horrible no, to you. No, but, but I don't think about it. You think about it a lot? I think about everything too much. All the really? Time. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, my, I have this chattering voice, this chattering mind, and it just doesn't stop. And nothing can make it stop. Do people hurt you a lot? Uh, I'm a sensitive little thing, and um, I'm very interested in poetry and the poetic side of life. And so, obviously, it's hard in modern life because there's no poetry in modern life. There's nothing very nice about modern life. It's very difficult. So, yes, I feel pangs and very easily. Do you love your industry? Um, I don't think anybody does. I don't think anybody does. Why? 
Why? Because it's very hard, it's very brutal, and um, it's completely changed now in recent years. It's, so it's, it's only concerned with marketing. It's not really concerned with people who sing or people who play music. So it's uh, because music appears to be dying and people have found other things to do. I think the, the major labels just want to grab as much as they can as quickly as possible. So therefore they just watch the, those horrible talent show things <laughs> with those small children <laughs> and they sign them and Which they ma make quick money. It's run by the suits. It's, it's only, only about marketing. You revealed that you had cancer. I, it has been found, yes. What kind? Um, Barrett's. What is that? It's in the esophagus. Oh, esophagus. Yes. Well, how do they treat it? They scrape it occasionally. And uh, I have medication. But I'm, I'm okay. Lots, I mean, of pe lots of people have it and they fade away. Yeah, Lots because, of people have it and they don't fade. I've had some friends yes. that have died of it. Yes. It, it you're not stage four then. Uh, no, no. I'm, what about when they when they told you? Uh, they, you yeah. had to shake you up. No, you don't really hear that that word, that c word. You don't really hear it when people say it, and it's, it seems to drift over you, and you just you just say yes, oh yes, 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 and you're thinking <laughs> later when you're on the stairs by yourself. It triggers in your mind. Oh. But at the time, you don't hear it. Would you say you're in good health today? Blooming. <laughs> Absolutely. Blooming, blooming good. Yes, blue. We'll be right back with Marcy. More with the legendary fellow. We're at Bootsy Bellows in West Hollywood. What a place. Back after this. We're back with Marcy. Uh, you don't, do you enjoy music as much as you did when, when things were going fantastic? Well, I, I enjoy to sing and to play more than ever, but uh, the, 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 the entire world of music has changed so much and the disappearance of physicals, seven inch singles, 12 inches, and I think is very sad. The disappearance of record stores, record shops is very sad. Are you performing everywhere now? As much as possible, yeah. Yeah. Do you do what, you, you go with a band? Yes, I do. And you work as a single, right? I do, I do. yes, I do. You don't miss group singing. <laughs> well, the, the band I'm with, we're, we're very united. We're very close. They're, they're not just session musicians. It's a very, very, very close band. And uh, um, I mean, we love each other and we're really close. So- uh, Are they from Great Britain? Uh, mostly here. Mostly here. And they're going to wear braces later. I saw them in the middle. Well, yeah. you have yours on. That's nice. You have yours on. Okay. Tell me about the vegan thing. Yeah. When did you become a vegan? Well, um, I became vegetarian first when I, I was very young, when I just caught sight of a program on the television and showing slaughter. And I'd never seen it before. The abattoir, the slaughterhouse. And I, I was frozen for five years. I couldn't believe that in our society, a place like this could exist. And even now, I can't exist. I can't believe that such places exist. It, it baffles me. It, I don't understand it. But well, we are carnivorous, right? Yes, I know, but nobody's that hungry. They're not really that hungry that you need to take a life of something that also wants to live. So you became vegetarian first. Yeah. What took you to the extra well, step? Well, it's just a gradual thing. Everybody begins as vegetarian. Because to dive straight forward into being, being a completely um, purist is very hard for most people. Uh, financially, they can't do it. And uh, also, you have to find food. But once you do it, it's, it's, it's so much better. Anything you miss? Oh, yeah. Um, this is a perfect opportunity to go like this. What is it? It's a shoe. It's a shoe. Not leather? It's not made of animals. I mean, we say animals, we don't really say leather. There's no animals involved in this shoe. But from a distance, you would think it was an animal shoe. This was made in Italy. Yes. What is it made of? Uh, plastic. Don't feel plastic, feels leather. Uh, it feels animal, it feels no, animal. No, 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 no. The no, bottom no. two? <laughs> no, no animal. Why doesn't he believe me? <laughs> oh, I believe you. I, I mean, what, what I really lie about this. And is, is this the place to, to lie about? No, shoes? Stell McCartney made in Italy. Do they make, do they make animal shoes? Yeah. But they make these too. 
Um, well, the, you, you can Italy make animal shoes. Stella doesn't. Oh, I see. That company does not. No. Well, that's amazing. You've also spoken about American politics and Hillary Clinton. You've criticized people like Michelle Bachman and Ann Coulter and Sarah Palin. You don't take on the tough ones. <laughs> I don't think they're tough. I think they're insane. They're insane. not tough. They're just insane. You think we're ready for Hillary? Uh, I, I think so, yeah. And you've known her for a long time. I've known her a long time. So you should know by now, really. Everybody in this country should know by now. And when you look at the Republicans who've lined up, it's, 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 it's ludicrous. They all look exactly the same. Except Trump. Well, in the dark, he'd look like everybody else. You know, it's, it's the same. It's the same old suit and tie. And you never see somebody who is absolutely, what is that? Who is this person? How interesting they look. They all look so uniform. And you've also criticised the president, have you not? Well, yes, I have. Yes, I have. Why has he disappointed you? I think he's disappointed lots of people, but I don't think with uh, cases like Ferguson and so on that he's really helped his own people. By, but, well, by not doing what? By being more interested and um, forgetting about the police machinery all the time and constantly saying the police are always right, we must listen to the police. Everybody knows that's not true. So uh, Obama, is he white inside? It's a very logical question, but I think he probably is. Last month you made news you were groped by TSA agents at San Francisco airport. <laughs> what happened? Uh, well, do, would you like the absolute details? That yeah, They are please. horrific. Um, um, he put his finger down my rear cleavage and you said you wanted the details. Okay, now why did he do that? Why would he want to? Why did, did you why ask him? Why does he need to? Did you ask him? Well, I, I had been through the full scanner and then I'd, I'd been through the second bit and everything was fine and clear. But then he went straight for my private bits and then he put his finger down my rear cleavage. And, and when you asked him, what did he say? Well, uh, it's just your opinion. And uh, he said it four times. And the people I was with from special services that said, this is assault. And he said, well, that's just your opinion. And they said, but we've seen it, and this is outrageous, and blah, 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 blah. Well, they're above the law. Yes, I filled in a complaints thing and so forth. Nothing happened? It will not happen. It's not. Do you smell a break coming up? Yeah. yeah. So do you. I don't. Up next, come on, you're a performer. <laughs> up next, Morrissey will answer some fan questions from social media. Don't click away. We're back with Morrissey. In the next segment, he's going to perform for us. Uh, you're very close with your band members. You personally very. pick them all out? Yes. Yes, yes. You and Russell Brand, yes. are you friends? Yes, we're he's friends. A, he's hysterical. He's, well, he's insane. He's <laughs> clinically insane. He, he might be. Oh, he is. Because he can't turn it off, right? He can't turn it off. He, can't. he doesn't know who turned it on. <laughs> so, but he's a one-off and he's, he has a big heart. He doesn't actually like to upset anybody even though he steamrolls in with everybody. But if he upsets somebody, he's, uh, he, he crumbles. So he's nice. <laughs> you still love, though, getting on a stage and singing, right? Yes, I do. That hasn't changed. That's never despite changed. Despite the business, despite everything around. Yes. That's still... Well, it's the only thing that nobody can interfere with. They can interfere with everything else, but they can't interfere with you when you're on a stage. OK, we have some social media questions. Mm. Scott Wines on Facebook. What memory glands would you want to get your hands on? <laughs> I'm not certain that. Or whose memory yeah, glands? He, he can mind his own business. And... I refuse to. I don't that. understand the question. <laughs> John on the Larry King Now blog. How often do you go re record shopping, and what are your favorite record stores? Well, they've diminished. They've all dried up and uh, slipped away, unfortunately. So it's harder to find them now. So, are I'm, you a record collector by nature? I am, yes, I am. And it was always the case you'd arrive at the city and you'd go straight for the record shops. And you like all kinds of music? Yes. Well, no. Um, but I can tolerate most music. There's some things I really can't stand. Like, like what? Uh, well, I don't like rap because the, the voice is always the same. But I quite like the social sentiments. Um, you like what they're saying? Yeah, I like it. 
I like what they're saying, but I just don't like the sound of the re repetition. Emma on the Larry King Now blog, you've talked very openly in the past about your struggles with depression. Has it gotten better over time? What advice would you give to people struggling with it and their loved ones who give their support? Well, I, for me, it didn't ever get better. I've had it for many, many years, and it's, um, I refer to it as the black dog, and it doesn't go away. Churchill uh, had it. Yes. Lincoln had it. Yes, yes, and it's usually the very first thing uh, when you wake up in the, in the day or the morning, whenever you wake up. But there is no cure, and I think it's part of being a, a sensitive, open human. And do you get, how do you get better through the day? I don't know, not really. Not really. No. You depressed now? Um, not now, because I'm here with you, and I feel quite safe. And uh, I've cured you. No, you haven't. No. <laughs> no. You take medication? I don't. But I've, I've been through everything, and it's just completely pointless. It really is. It's, it's a frame of mind, a state of mind, and it's uh, circumstantial mostly. And you never thought, I hope, of harming yourself. No, but many others have. Of harming you. <laughs> yes. Uh, it can't help, but it, it crosses everybody's mind. Everybody thinks about it, even people who mistakenly assume that they're happy. They think of just disappearing and having enough, and many people do, and just taking control and saying no more, no more, no more of this silliness. And uh, it's admirable. Tree on Larry King Now blog. What's it like to go from creating a song to singing that song for many years, sometimes night after night while on tour? It's... You ever get tired? No. No, 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 no. The, the songs are so important to me, and they have been my life always, and they've come before anything else, so um, they are me. And it's not just a repertoire, and I don't go through the motions. And if I'm tired, it's because I'm physically travel weary. It's not because, oh dear God, here comes that song again. It's just because I'm physically tired. You're gonna perform Kiss Me A Lot in a little while. Is that a special song for you? I can't stand it. I love that song. Yes, it's a beautiful <laughs> Good liner. Song. It's a beautiful song. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Philippe on the Larry King Now blog. Are you a fan of the British music of today, such as Sam Smith and Noel Gallagher? Um, I'm not a fan of modern music at all. I don't hear anything interesting at all. I don't. I don't hear anything interesting. So Sam Smith doesn't? No? <clears throat> I think it's time to rapidly move on. <laughs> you like Sinatra? <laughs> yes, I do. He was pretty good. Oh, I thought you meant Nancy. <laughs> oh. But he, he, he was great too, yeah. Good admission. Suzanne, what's your favorite on Larry King now? What is your favorite Oscar Wilde quip? There's, there's just Do you so have a favorite? I love oh, Oscar. Oh, there's just so many. <laughs> oh, God, it's, this is terrible. I wish you had written to me last week and told me about this question. Uh, it's all right, it's not a quote, will you? Uh, we are who we are, having secretly decided who we'd like to be. Good one. Carol on the Larry King now brought. What do you do to prepare yourself vocally, physically, and mentally in those last five to ten minutes before going on stage? Nothing. Ever. Nothing. No yodeling. No... No alcohol. No gargling. No juggling. You just no, go on. I just go on. I really do. And when you're on, you're enjoying it. Yes. In fact, you could almost say, if you dare, that I'm happy. So you have depression, yeah. but when the stage, when you walk on that stage, yes. it goes. Uh, yes. On that note, when we come back, Morrissey will get better because he's going to perform. <laughs> you will not want to miss this. Now a special treat for all our viewers on Larry King Now, the great Morrissey and Kiss Me A Lot. <laughs>
America. I want to thank my special guest Morrissey and his great band Kiss Me A Lot is available on iTunes and remember you can find me on Twitter at Kings Things and I'll see you next time. Thank you. You're great.